evening, sir. We are live now. Good evening, all. On occasion of uh, World Physiotherapy Day, I am welcoming everyone for this pre-celebration or pre-event for this World Physiotherapy Day on behalf of EXRX India. I am Rupesh, physiotherapist from Peak Health Studio, Chennai. Today, we are going to take session on exercise enriches existence. So the first production part and physiology part is going to be taken by Dr. Chandra Mohan, MPT. He is freelance physiotherapist. He is going to start the session. So with the help of Duna, ma'am, we have planned this session to reach everyone all over the world who are actively participating and following Team EXRX India for learning sessions and having great progression in their career. So I wish everyone happy World Physiotherapy Day and we'll start the session with this. Sir, you can. Thank you so much, Rupesh. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Tuna for making the arrangements and uh, next for you because we don't have any plan for this World Physiotherapy Day, but you both told that we should do at least a webinar. And uh, thank you for encouraging me to do something uh, differently. So that today's topic is exercise enriches existence. Existence means survival. So how healthy we are going to survive? Why exercises? There are a lot of techniques. Okay, manipulation, mobilization, dry needling, blood flow restriction type of exercise, but why general exercises? Because exercise is a drug, exercise is a medicine. Exercise is our main uh, tool to uh, give benefits for the clients or patients, not only for illness, even for wellness. So the fitness industry must belong to our physiotherapists, but we mostly concentrate on rehab, and we fail to concentrate on fitness. But recent times, fitness industry is under physiotherapy. Slowly, we are up upcoming with uh, our own fitness setups. And during this pandemic, many of the physiotherapists are teaching online exercise sessions. When I thought of uh, how to uh, taper the drug dosage in uh, chronic conditions or how to stay fit without taking any drugs in future. So there is nothing, no tablet or no drug is available uh, to stay fit, but exercise can keep us fit and healthy. So why should we know about the benefits of exercise? How does it's going to help us? So we teach exercise for back pain. We teach exercise for diabetes. We teach exercise for uh, cardiac conditions. We teach exercise for uh, well clients actually they don't have any problems but we teach exercise and they stay fit what is the mechanism behind it we are not going very deeply into it but we can see what are all the enzymes which helps us to keep us healthy so earlier some uh, centuries ago when human went for hunting to bring food. They don't eat for thrice a day. They eat for only one day because when they get up in the morning, they will go for hunting. They go for 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers. They will hunt any animal. And if the animal get ex escaped from a uh, wound, they will chase that animal further. And they can travel up to another 15 kilometers, 20 kilometers, and they will bring that animal and they cook and they eat. And those animals have full of fat and they don't take dinner. Uh, daytime meal is enough. Then again, the next day they will start uh, hunting. So there is no need for three days a meal because they had a fatty food. But when civilization came up, when we started agricultural, when we started eating vegetables, fruits and all those things, slowly we came out of hunting. So we have a sophisticated area where we can cultivate our own foods. So from those times, we started eating two times a day, three times a day. And in recent times, during our 
pandemic period we stayed at home and also we had three times meals what happens we become physically inactive or less active we had a sedentary lifestyle so before going on to how exercise helps us we should know about physical inactivity laziness so otherwise called as indolence so you can see the photos here that what is physical inactivity we can sleep on the couch and eat drink and again we sleep we sit on sofa and watch television for longer hours we use our laptop play games or watch movies or any kind of uh, videos uh, lying down on the sofa playing video games for hours sitting and even work from home we are not moving anywhere we keep every uh, snacks food and nearby us and we work we maintain any position we want but we don't uh, uh, physically active that means we don't walk or get up for longer hours otherwise simply sitting and chatting for a while using our mobile phones so what happens when even overweight children and adolescents grow up to be overweight this sedentary lifestyle physically inactive lifestyle makes us overweight not only the adult even for, uh, uh, childhood from the child even the healthy child can become a obese adult so it is like when you sit for longer times what happens the energy doesn't uh, expend energy ex- expenditure doesn't happen so what happens it gets accumulated as fat and we gain weight once we gain weight once we are inactive so we have our own body will have to work against inflammations and all those things so what happens cytokines so anti inflammatory uh, substances become more that also induces in uh, obesity chronic heart diseases and many other diseases so here you can see a healthy child who plays video games and eats high fat food not only uh, physically active we should concentrate on our diet also we should have a healthy food low fat food so but what happens the healthy child plays games in videos uh, and high fat foods so all study no actions which leads to mild obesity and when that same child likes to climb the stairs or jump from a uh, small heights and the kid feels discomfortable or painful he doesn't want to do the same activity again because it is painful or uncomfortable so that moderate obesity child leads to severe obese child same way that when it is severe obese child he doesn't want to he knows that i don't want to do this he will call his mother father grandfather grandmother and he will make others work for him and again he is maintaining physical inactivity which leads obese adult so obese adult automatically will get lot of disease especially coronary artery disease diabetes pulmonary disease high medical bills and also even premature death apart from that asthma diabetes and musculoskeletal disease prevent exercise and being on depression and low esteem low self confidence and poor achievements and even uh, cognitive functions so an active lifestyle in childhood should lead to health benefits in adulthood so mostly children follows or copies the adults so if we are having a, a healthy benefits healthy lifestyle they will also f- uh, follow us and they will also stay as a healthy adult many of the studies reveal that sedentary behavior during childhood leads to more passive lifestyle when they are said having inactive lifestyle during their childhood even in adulthood they will be like this same so even in uh, during childhood they are overweight even in adult they are overweight so what is sedentary time how sedentary time is calculated see um, sedentary time is associated with more time consuming media especially watching television using computer laptops and playing games Uh, video games okay and even holding mobile phones and chatting for a longer hour sitting in a place so what happens again accumulation of 
fat and what happens to blood vessels when we sit for longer duration it compresses our blood vessels just like touch me not plan when you touch one end of the branch of uh, small branches of leaves the whole branch closes close, closes actually it closes all the leaves it gets close like that the whole length of blood vessel will get shrinken a little so what happens it leads to uh, hypertension so hypertension when when hypertension comes people has to take tablets atarvos protein statin kind of drugs what uh, it it does it breaks our fat molecules also okay so they will end up in diabetic later so one problem leads to another and another so many problems reaches at the uh, inactive person so what are sedentary uh, time so sedentary periods of more than 9 hour per day so among 24 hours we sleep we have to sleep for minimum 9 hours if not at least 7 hours 7 to 8 hours that is suggestible so apart from those 8 to 9 hours another 9 hours we are sitting doing nothing or sitting doing our work work from home model uh, maybe working in our pc or laptops so what happens our activity time is reduced so it is also a risk factor for chronic diseases so if you are not moving more than 9 hour per day that means in case if you are moving you are getting up you are walking but if you are come back within 10 seconds 20 seconds or within a minute it is not considered as a active lifestyle whatever the activity you are doing it should be beyond 3 minutes it should be active you, are, you should walk or do some activity so unless until you are doing for minimum 3 to 5 minutes it is not a dull and active lifestyle so it it falls under sedentary periods so what happens the disease of physical inactivity this physical inactivity leads to lot of diseases so physical activity or physical exercise have positive effects between this anti and pro inflammatory mediators pro inflammatory mediators means it is a, it is an inflammatory enzymes which is available which prevents us getting any diseases it is already available and once we get any problem anti inflammatory process starts and the anti inflammatory enzymes comes to help us so pro inflammatory mediators release is more in sedentary lifestyle so to help that anti inflammatory comes if you are active otherwise its level will be raising and it enhances sarcopenia and accumulation of fat in skeletal muscles in this we see a circle reducing muscle strength and favoring further physical inactivity once muscle strength is reduced you put weight okay and you lost a uh, muscle uh, mass so you don't want we don't like to do any activity again you will uh, would like to stay in inactive lifestyle besides that visceral fat the fat which helps uh, visceral organs to be safe and it should be a little amount there also it gets accumulated and it also leads to chronic degenerative disease such as obesity type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disease cancer at the two they say that a uh, few researchers says that 12 or 13 types of cancer dementia and depression this complex scenario characterized by physical inactivity and the associated disease is named the disease of physical inactivity so when the organs are not ready to work with our uh, regular activity we tend to be lazy that laziness leads to physical inactivity so to have a balanced life we should have either physical activity or exercise along with diet so it will be like uh, a bull cart okay physical activity and exercise as a one bull and another bull will be a diet it should go hand on hand move together so only because of exercise or physical activity will not help only because of diet will not help both are required to stay healthy and yes 
so we have seen about physical inactivity let us see what are the physical activities and the exercise and how it helps so in urban area we can compare from rural and urban area you can see the pictures so here uh, they are doing a lot of activities okay even for cooking the woman has to sit and cook and it's not a sophisticated uh, kitchen okay and the men work in farm and the women work uh, at home and also washing clothes washing um, utensils and taking care of kids but in urban they have a different a uh, lifestyle they have washing machines to wash their clothes they have sophisticated uh, uh, kitchen and their work will be reduced and they go to office sat for hours to work and when they come home they will sit and watch tv the, their physical activity is uh, reduced so exercise provides powerful health benefits for quality of life and physical function and independent living throughout the life uh, cycle so exercise impedes aging process and promotes longevity how so when we do exercises lot of enzymes helps us to maintain uh, to maintain a healthy lifestyle which a uh, lot of enzymes secretes which keeps us Uh, away from a degenerative process or delays degenerative process or promotes regeneration of the cells and it promotes longevity generally exercise promotes longevity but cycling have a best uh, uh, results and also we must have some exercise partners to uh, do our uh, exercises or physical activity also at a home we can help our life partner or mother father siblings uh, to uh, uh, do some works together and uh, uh, if nobody is there we can uh, go with our community make friends do group exercises and find a exercise partner to do and while going uh, for exercises we should avoid too much of talking using our cell phones we should concentrate on doing exercise only exercises only and exercise helps us by halting progression of heart disease and uh, it re it reduces plaque you can see it is a normal vessel here it is uh, artery is shown in the uh, center of uh, upper uh, photograph lines you can see that so this is a normal artery which have normal blood flow what happens due to sedentary lifestyle uh, it uh, 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 the plaque has been forming uh, uh, so waste materials or any fat accumulations inside the blood vessels okay so it builds up actually if you are doing exercises we can halt all these things so we end up with cardiovascular problems and so it is better that let us do some exercises and stay healthy and also exercise affects body composition by decreasing abdominal adiposity and improving weight control we are also going to see how uh, adiposity and in weight control exercise helps so this is uh, first picture shows that abdominal adiposity and even the fourth picture also shows uh, abdominal adiposity how the a uh, medical worker uh, measures the abdomen circumference and by doing exercise maintaining the weight the curl showing a happy face and also simply i put this uh, to say uh, that when we work out when we work muscle requires energy muscle requires oxygen so not for anaerobic type but for aerobic type when we tend to do continuous exercise a continuous physical activity muscle demands oxygen so what happens it automatically stimulates lungs to go for uh, oxygen carbon dioxide will be loaded so it will require more oxygen so apart from that the muscle also need proper nutrition and all those things so uh, the blood has to be taken from the heart to the muscle leg again so it is like wasserman model they will say so muscle needs oxygen and nutrients to work 
and it leads to recruitment of lung and that leads to recruitment of heart so that it will be like gears first gear second gear third gear once proper blood supply came proper oxygen came muscle will be uh, continuously working so there will be smooth movement of exercises or smooth physical activities and by doing regular exercises we will be having post exercise hypotension which helps us to reduce blood pressure for normal uh, person those who are not hypertensive there will be very slight reduction of uh, blood pressure but for a hypertensive patients there will be a better results there will be more than uh, 7 or 10 mhg uh, reduction in the blood pressure so it increases cardio uh, function and uh, maintains good coronary blood flow and exercises our physical activity any task completions improves psychological well being in response to exercise associated with reduced stress anxiety and depression you can see the pictures above just given so they are in stress anxiety and depression when doing exercises uh, enzymes which helps us to stay happy we will see later what are what are the enzymes so even on who acsm recommends 45 to 60 minutes of brisk walking gardening or cycling which should be included in daily routine to maintain weight in middle aged men so we should have a, if we maintain our body weight uh, we we can stay away from more than 30 plus chronic diseases so those diseases are due to obesity or sedentary lifestyle physically inactive lifestyle so to come out of that minimum of 45 to 60 minutes of brisk walking during walking you should not talk with the partner and you should concentrate more on walking and gardening gardening requires more energy expenditure and cycling should be included in daily routine when cycling is included uh, it uh, it uh, stimulates the brain center respiratory center in the brain and endurance will be uh, increased and it, uh, and many researchers says that cycling provides more longevity yes if not able to walk for uh, 45 minutes at least minimum 30 minutes of daily walking is uh, needed to have a moderate effects so and also if you are walking every day for 30 minutes it is reported that the weight gain was 150 g per year less for men and 290 g per year less for women so if you are walking every day so you will not though you are gaining weight when compared to others you will have a, a reduced weight gain only you don't put weight that much easily so for every 30 minutes of walking per day men reduce their weight gain by a 250 g per year and women by 530 g so this this has taken uh, in a study that there is no changes in the habitual lifestyle they can eat they can uh, go away with their regular schedule of their lifestyle but they told them to walk for 30 minutes simply so those who have followed their own habitual lifestyle had only 250 grams of uh, weight gain per year for men and for women it is only 530 gram for instance for women the total weight gain in 15 years so you can see in that a uh, second line for women it is 530 grams okay for 530 into 15 you can uh, approximately uh, calculate it and was 13 kg for inactive women compared to only 5 kg for active women so if the person not doing any exercises she can um, gain 13 kg of weight but when you are active so 0.53 into 15 years approximately 7 to 8 kilograms so 
13 minus 7 or 8. It is only 5 kg. So it is compared to uh, inactive woman. So only 5 kg is weight gained. That means maintaining a uh, good weight by doing exercises, minimum 30 minutes of walking every day. But in 20 year period, men gained 2.6 kg, women gained 6.1 kg, less weight than men and women with low activity. There will be weight gain, but it will be under control. That's what the research has come to say. So spending at least 2,000 to 3,000 kilocalories additional energy per week on physical activity is necessary for reducing the risk of stroke. And also, at least if you cannot work out for 200 to 300 kilocalories, that is uh, energy needed, uh, at least you just work out for 1,000 to 2,000 kilocalories energy expenditure per week appear to reduce overall risk of coronary heart disease, stroke, and hypertension. Yes, what are all the vigorous activities? So jogging, running, swimming, playing tennis, aerobic dancing is necessary at least once per week to achieve any positive effect on health, even for a normal person to stay fit or to reduce risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So may, either the person may be normal and he may prevent type 2 or may be pre-diabetic. They can postpone to be a diabetic patient or they can reverse it there itself. With increasing in age, higher intensity per training session or several per sessions per week are required to achieve the same reduction. When the person's age is increasing, higher intensity sessions are needed to reduce the same rhythm. Maybe the time has to be uh, increased or intensity has to be increased to reduce the uh, risk. And these are the moderate exercises, walking, uh, gentle walking and gentle uh, cycling, not too much of fast and doing some uh, indoor activities and uh, simple exercises at home, which also gives benefits. And Physical exercise is physical activity and also exercise. Physical activity is the activity of a person on the whole day. And exercise is customized to one. One among uh, uh, physical activity is exercise. is a protective factor for neurodegeneration. It increases blood flow to the brain and it increases academic, academic achievement in children and business achievement in adults. It improves uh, cognit cognitive abilities, learning, memory, attention process and execution process and it reduces risk of developing memory loss, that's dementia. You can see the pictures and everything that kids learn and, it all, uh, and the learned kid also executes Okay, and staying happy is also one among the main factor. You can see the picture where a, a, a boy holding the number three uh, up, that means he may have a poorer uh, achievement, but by doing some activities, uh, he may reach the three level or top three level and he will be happy. And that promotes further achievements. So staying happy is also one among the major factors. Uh, so apart from this, we have 36 chronic conditions which can be prevented, primarily prevented by doing exercises. These are the lists which are given that uh, uh, premature death, low cardiorespiratory fitness, sarcopenia, metabolic syndrome, obesity, insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, coronary heart disease, peripheral artery disease, hypertension, stroke, congestive heart failure, endothelial dysfunction, arterial dyslipidemia, hemostosis, deep vein thrombosis, cognitive dysfunction, depression and anxiety, osteoporosis, osteoarthritis, balance, bone fracture and fault prevention, rheumatoid arthritis, colon cancer, breast cancer, endometrial cancer, 
gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, polycystic ovary syndrome, erectile dysfunction, pain, diabetes, constipation, gallbladder disease. Earlier, some three or four decades ago, you can say 20, uh, two decades ago, when there is any problem, we will go to an hospital and get treated by a physician and we will coming back. Now, for everything, we are having a specialty hospital. Obesity, we have speciality. Cardio uh, diseases, we have speciality. Trauma, we have speciality. So even for uh, uh, cancer, we have a uh, special uh, hospital. So we can prevent these many chronic conditions by doing exercises. Thank you. But it doesn't stop here. We should know about the mechanism behind it. So I'm going to give some basic uh, uh, enzyme details which are helping us to uh, uh, stay healthy uh, from these chronic conditions. So we all know that exercise produces enzyme by muscles. So those are cytokines, which are called as myokines. So muscle is considered as an endocrine system. Under physical exercise, muscles produce and releases molecules. They are called as cytokines. But since it comes from muscles, it is named as myokines. These myokines have actions on distant cells or neighboring cells. Sometimes uh, it acts as autocrine. It acts on its own uh, cell. Not all of the myokines produced by skeletal muscle, few are uh, produced by adipose tissue also. So they call that as adipomyokines. And uh, skeletal muscle is possibly the primary source of myokines. And since it represents over 30% of human body mass. So here we talk about exercise. Only while doing exercises, these myokines will separate. Uh, if we are only doing any physical activities, these myokines will be uh, secreted. So aerobic, when you are doing aerobic exercises, it activates PGC1. They call it as peroxism proliferator activator receptor coactivator 1. What it does, it induces mitochondrial biogenesis, which is important in regulation of protein metabolism. So Aerobic exercise helps in protein metabolism with the help of uh, peroxisome proliferator activated receptor. So and when we are doing anaerobic exercises, it stimulates myofibrils, production of myofibrils proteins. So it builds up the muscle mass. Anaerobic exercise builds up the muscle mass. Aerobic exercise prevents muscle wasting and it maintains the metabolism of muscle. And these processes avoid muscle weight wasting by strengthening protein synthesis. And also different types of muscle fibers release different myopins. We have seen that different exercise gives uh, different uh, benefits. Now the different fibers also gives different uh, uh, myopins. So type 2 fibers, glycolytic fibers mainly produce myopins such as angiogenin, masculine and osteoproteogenin, while oxidative fibers mainly produce myonectin and iris. We will see what it does later. And also some myokines are induced by exercise through specific types of physical activity that also we'll see it and, uh, uh, later. So what do, how does this myokines helps in glucose metabolism? When it acts muscle on muscle, so there are a lot of interleukins. So from interleukin 1 to interleukin 35. So they are enzymes secreted from different cells and IL-6, IL-15 uh, secreted uh, in muscle helps stimulating glucose uptake and oxidation via GLUT4 upregulation and translocation. And also interleukin 13 has been related to glycogen production and oxidation while fibroblast growth FGF21 uh, improves insulin sensitivity. So this IL-6, IL-15, IL-13 and also fibroblast growth factor improves insulin sensitivity. 
so here it it acts the muscle acts on its own muscle okay and muscle acts on that is myokin acts on liver so fibroblast growth factor and interleukin 6 interleukin 6 is the first uh, one which pronounced as myokin and they found it uh, not only acts on muscle uh, liver pancreas it acts on various uh, organs in our body it takes part in uh, regulating uh, many of the things in our uh, organs so it promotes gluconeogenesis in the liver while interleukin 6 and interleukin 15 regulates glucose production these are myokines when we do exercise myokines of fgf il6 and il15 uh, secretes which helps in regulating glucose production and also myokines acts on pancreas so it uh, il6 interleukin 6 stimulates beta cells proliferation and preservation while chemokine cx3c motif they call it ligand 1 has revealed to promote protective effects on pancreatic islets and another myokine which is named aplin activates insulin production in pancreas so aplin is also a myokine which is secreted from the muscle it also activates insulin production in the in this organ so how myokine acts on lipid metabolism again you can see uh, on muscle to muscle Uh, sometimes it directly works on uh, uh, muscle to muscle uh, in the name of brain derived neurotropic factor so the myokin may travel to brain crossing blood brain barrier otherwise when you are doing uh, exercises it uh, indirectly stimulate the brain cells and it produces brain derived neurotropic factor and interleukin 6 interleukin 15 which increases lipolysis and it helps in utilization by energy which is utilized by the cells that is mitochondria so muscle muscle and adipose tissue what is the cross tag between the adipose tissue and muscle again in lipid metabolism irisin epilin and interleukin 15 Uh, these myokines increases lipolysis while irisin and interleukin 15 have anti adipogenetic effects that means uh, uh, they will fight against uh, getting obese so these are the myokines which secretes and prevents uh, be uh, getting obese and besides irisin and fgf 21 promoting browning of white adipose tissues so white adipose tissue white uh, 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 fat you can say it will be browned it will be brown means it will be melted uh, which is which which my uh, can helps irisin and fgf promotes the browning of white adipocytes and nicotinamide in methyl transferase facilitates fatty acid mobilization even under low energy circumstances and the next myokine which acts on liver is fgf21 which reduces accumulation of fat and increases the oxidation of fatty acid on this organ similar to adipose tissue nicotinamide and methyl transferase mobilizes fatty acid when energy availability is low same way in bone metabolism these myokines act on osteoblasts uh, which uh, which promotes uh, new bone uh, cells formations and myokines which are responsible are irisin and interleukin 15 or alpha as well as for periosteum activation caused by leukemia leukemia uh, which damages its own uh, uh, cells in the sense bone marrow and all those things so it has to be stopped so leukemia inhibitive factor myokine comes there and uh, irisin and uh, il15 or alpha suppresses uh, these uh, lif that means leukemia inhibitive inhibitory factor and it maintains bone health so and then muscle to muscle so anabolic or catabolic either building up or the breaking down of uh, molecules 
So IL-6 interleukin-6 and decorin is another uh, myokine has been associated with different hypertrophy pathways. So what happens, there are some myokines which uh, helps in, uh, which uh, uh, enhances hypertrophy. So this IL-6 and decorin comes and suppresses those myokines in a different pathways and maintains the muscle mass. Similarly, folistatin-related protein 1, FSTL, it also comes and promotes the increase and in maintenance of skeletal muscle mass by antagonizing myostatin. Myostatin is the uh, myokine which uh, uh, stimulates uh, hypertrophy uh, in the muscle. So this IL-6, decorin, folistatin-related protein promotes and maintains skeletal muscle mass uh, fighting against myostatin. Lastly, IL-15 and IL-15 or alpha have anti-atropic effects. These uh, myokines are having anti-atropic effects, especially in the presence of any immune or metabolic disease. So when there are any immunity uh, diseases or metabolic diseases, when we uh, do exercises, IL-15 and IL-15 or alpha secretes and it prevents the skeletal muscle mass atrophy. What it does in circulatory system? It has, an, uh, uh, it has effects on the endothelial layer. So it secretes, muscle secretes angiopoietin like 4, interleukin 8, interleukin 15, FSTL1 activate angiogenesis. It forms new vascular uh, uh, structures in response to exercises and also facilitates endothelium preservation process. It, it preserves from uh, uh, any damages to the endothelial layer, any injury, in the sense, any inflammation to that layer. And for immunity, immune system, muscle to immune cells. So interleukin-6, CX3-CL1, chitinase-3-like protein, and probably FSTL and interleukin-15 promote anti-inflammatory effect when they are acutely produced in response to exercise. When these myokines <clears throat> secreted as anti-inflammatory, when, uh, when we have any uh, diseases, when our immune cells are affected, when we do exercise, not every time, we have to wait till it subsides. Um, and later we should start doing exercises so that it will uh, promote anti-inflammatory effect on our immune system. Otherwise, if you are already doing, even before getting any disease, if you are doing exercises or if you are having an uh, active lifestyle, these enzymes, which uh, are secreted from the muscles, secretones, tomes, uh, helps us uh, to promote anti-inflammatory effect on our body. Although it has been suggested that these myokines mediate the metabolism of immune cells, mainly in lymphocytes and T cells, the muscle to immune cells cross talk communication remained to be elicited. Still, a lot of uh, researchers are going on because there are more than 3,000 myokines. Uh, many have not named it uh, properly. So, what happens in myogenesis? So, muscle to muscle cross talk. Myostatin is the first myosin identified as muscle derived factor. So, it is a member of transforming growth factor, beta, TGF beta, super family, and negatively regulates myogenesis in autocrine. So what happens is myostatin kills its own muscle cells. So it goes for hypertrophy. So massive muscle hypertrophy is seen in myostatin knockout mice. They have, or researchers have checked in mice, cattle, sheep, and dogs that demonstrates an increase in fiber, cross-sectional area, and fiber number. But what comes to save the muscle to get prevented from hypertrophy? We can see in the picture, interleukin-4, interleukin-6, interleukin-7, interleukin-15, masculine, and LIF. Decorin. Decorin also comes. They have not mentioned in the picture, but decorin has been identified as a myokin that is regulated by exercise and acts as an antagonist to myostatin. And apolin, 
they are fighting in a different pathway not in a common pathway decorin fights myostatin in a different pathway tapelin uh, fights myostatin in a different pathway and interleukins masculine fights in a different pathway so circulating levels of decorin are increased in response to exercises whereas exercise training reduces the levels of myostatin when we do exercises these interleukins musculins get secreted and it suppresses the myostatin level in muscles and also in blood because all the enzymes which are secreted cannot be stored it should, it will be immediately mixing up with blood and taken to the target organs so when we do exercise these myosins um, uh, myokins are secreted and uh, fights against myostatin and its uh, level gets reduced so it uh, prevents hypertrophy of the muscle and muscleen has been identified as an exercise induced factor promoting skeletal muscle mitochondrial biogenesis in mice so recent evidence has shows that muscleen abolishes muscle atrophy related with cancer in mice so muscleen is also uh, fighting against in uh, uh, myostatin but they mainly find out it helps in cancer patients so the next is muscle to brain cross talk it indirectly helps uh, to secrete brain derived neurotropic factor mainly in hippocampal uh, area so exercise has been shown to influence the hippocampus more than any other part of the brain so it affects mostly a uh, hippocampus so it <clears throat> physical activity and exercise training decrease the risk of dementia uh, by uh, promoting uh, brain derived neurotropic factor and appear to play a role in treatment of the uh, dementia and physical exercise has a positive impact on stress anxiety and depression and many other studies have shown that active lifestyle is associated with learning and memory executive functions we have already seen uh, showed uh, some pictures that kids are learning and also executing and even on language and reaction time academic achievements in children and intelligence in adolescents so physical activity also have beneficial effects on appetite sleep mood by indirectly uh, stimulating uh, our brain correspond uh, co corresponding to the area for appetite sleep and mood so studies in human shows that brain derived neurotropic factor is released from the brain during a bout of bicycle exercise and aerobic exercise training for 3 months increases the volume of the hippocampus in healthy individuals by 12% and by 16% in patients with schizophrenia so how it uh, have a, a influence in our brain so brain derived neurotropic factor is a growth factor for the hippocampus and involved in self survival and uh, learning so this myokin brain derived neurotropic factor helps in self survival and learning process a couple of interesting studies propose that myokins that are cap catepsin b and irisin these two may cross it is very difficult to cross the blood brain barrier but these two may pass the blood brain barrier and provoke an increase in uh, brain derived neurotropic factor so the next cross talk between uh, myokin is uh, muscle and uh, brain for appetite and weight control so a study shows that interleukin 6 improves glucose tolerance and suppresses feeding when it is applied centrally in mice but not intraperitoneally at the same dose however a four fold higher interleukin 6 concentration injected peripherally significantly reduced food take in uh, intake what happens when we do simply when we do exercises okay where we we burn out our adipose tissue and we utilize uh, the energy uh, to do the work so so when we do for a longer duration and uh, higher intensity the muscle uh, derived interleukin 6 inhibits appetite so it inhibits appetite because we may not feel uh, hungry and uh, yes 
uh, the breakdown of uh, uh, the adipose tissue, braining, uh, uh, browning of uh, white adipose tissue may be uh, enough. So we will be uh, feeling, uh, we will be not feeling appetite. So systemic interleukin-6 knockout mice accumulate adipose tissue, whereas central overexpression of interleukin-6 leads to a decrease in body weight. So when uh, it acts, when we don't feel appetite, we don't eat much, but we will be active uh, by breakdown of uh, those uh, white adipose tissues. We ha we have enough uh, uh, energy uh, to do our activities. So we don't uh, feel like eating, and we reduce eating also. That leads to decrease in body weight, and it is a major player, interleukin-6 is a major player in uh, controlling body weight. So another Murin study demonstrated that lack of muscular derived interleukin-6 lead to decrease in body weight and food consumption in response to leptin. Leptin is another hormone which uh, is responsible for our appetite and all those things. So human studies demonstrate that uh, physiological levels of interleukin-6 have many positive effects, including an enhancement of both insulin-stimulated glucose uptake and lipolysis and fat oxidation. So here, uh, mainly physiotherapists who are concentrating on uh, weight loss or weight control for their clients, they should uh, have some idea about how interleukin-6 helps to maintain body weight. And next is muscle to adipose crosstalk. So lipolysis, breaking of lipids. So you can see in the picture that uh, interleukin uh, 6 and brain derived neurofactor, which uh, when we do exercise, uh, it stimulates the kinase, which uh, ends up in fat oxidation. So it may either uh, uh, make a browning of adipose tissue or it may uh, work on uh, uh, visceral fat mass. So abdominal adiposity in uh, associated with type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular, dementia, colon cancer, and breast cancer. So we have to do exercises to break down this abdominal uh, adiposity. So, <clears throat> so when we do exercise, the IL-6, interleukin-6 stimulates lipolysis and decreases visceral fat mass. So who are all coming for the help here? Irisin, meteorin light, and IL-6 have a role in browning of white adipose tissue. And IL-6, interleukin-6, and brain derived neurotropic factor stimulates the AMPK kinase activation. So it leads to uh, uh, benefits of uh, visceral fat mass reduction or lipolysis or browning of the white adipose tissue. So abdominally obese humans were randomized to tocilizumab. So that is an you know, IL-6 receptor antibody or placebo during an intervention of 12 weeks with either aerobic exercise or no exercise. As expected, exercise training lead to a reduction in visceral adipose tissue mass. So the, there is a study they have done uh, which uh, shows that there is a reduction of visceral fat mass. So browning, how browning happens? IL-6 works as, interleukin-6 works as autocrine manner. It uh, uh, works uh, on its own muscle. So it, uh, uh, my, my, like myostatin, interleukin-6 also works on uh, adipose tissue uh, and it, because IL-6 comes from adipose also, not only uh, from the muscles, it comes on uh, adipose tissue also. So uh, by uh, autocrine manner, it browns uh, adipose tissue. And irisin, meteorin like myokines are controversial and they don't have a, a specific uh, uh, data regarding how it helps in browning of adipose tissue. So beta amino, Isobutyric acid, biba, they call it, uh, is a small molecule, a non protein beta amino acid, not classified as myokin, but secreted from myocytes, which also, this is an acid, so which helps in browning of adip adipose tissue. 
So, in addition to these, uh, two hepatokines appear to play a role in exercise-induced browning of white adipose tissue. Then, the fibroblast growth factor 21, that is FGF21, and folistatin are released from human liver during exercises. These, these uh, five F GF and folistatin released from liver during exercise helps in browning of adipose tissue. And how again, once again, we are, it helps in uh, muscle to bone crosstalk. So you can see in this picture, myostatin, which helps in, uh, 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 it is a negative regulator in uh, bone also. It has a negative effect on bone. So what happens? Interleukin-6, decorin, and uh, insulin-like uh, growth factor 1 and the fibroblastic uh, growth factor 2, which uh, suppresses myostatin and uh, maintains the bone health. Uh, along with that, osteoglycine, decorin, uh, sorry, osteoglycin is a myopin that appears to stop myoblast migration during myogenesis. So muscle liver prostock, in order to maintain glucose hemostasis during exercises, glucose uptake in muscle is accompanied by increased glucose production from the liver. And mediators of endogenous glucose production include an increase in portal venous glucagon to insulin ratio, epinephrine, norepinephrine. But these factors cannot alone upon further rapid increase in glucose production. So here again, the myokines, many myokines, you can uh, look at the picture here, IL-6, which uh, uh, stimulates uh, IL-6 or alpha, group 130 or beta. So according to uh, it, it uh, either acts on P13K, which leads to increased glucose uptake, or otherwise, if it stimulates PSTAT3, Again, it gets, uh, stimulates the kinase, AMP kinase, which leads to an uh, increase of fat, fat oxidation. So IL-6, interleukin-6 uh, plays a major role uh, in uh, glucose production also. So apart from that, uh, muscle to gut crosstalk, how myokines uh, helps in gut. So according to LAN, Let's go at all. Look, uh, they looked at uh, the effects of IL-6 on postprandial glycemia and the insulin secretion in humans and found that interleukin-6 delays the rate of gastric emptying, which is the most significant regulator of postprandial glucose. So uh, there are uh, phases of gastric emptying and it delays, uh, IL-6 delays of gastric emptying which is uh, helps in regulation regulation of postprandial glucose. So this study, uh, the, uh, the author study identifies a new role of human IL-6 being involved in gastric emptying and sparing insulin in, in a postprandial situation. Uh, and a classic study by Ellingsgaard et al. legendly showed that acute elevations in interleukin-6 stimulates GLP-1 secretion from both intestinal L cells and back pancreatic beta cells, leading to improved secretion of insulin. So, this finding in, uh, implicates interleukin-6 in a beneficial regulation of insulin secretion and suggests that interleukin-6 is involved in an endocrine loop that may protect against impaired glucose hemostasis. You can see the endocrine loop here. So IL-6 helps in an increase of GLP-1 that means glucagon-like uh, peptide, and uh, it uh, leads to increase uh, insulin. And also IL-6 angiogenin, osteoproteogenin, uh, it also leads to increase insulin in pancreas. So either in the direct way or through uh, gut, uh, it increases uh, in insulin. So you can uh, see here, it uh, has uh, muscle skin crosstalk. Aging is associated with uh, numerous alterations. And a few authors found that uh, there are some skin changes uh, in mice and also in humans uh, following endurance exercises. And they showed that exercise regulates muscular interleukin-15 expression via skeletal muscle. 
kinase and elimination of that kinase lead to weakening of skin structure. So when, uh, uh, whereas uh, interleukin 15 injections mimic some of the anti-aging effects of exercise on neuron skin. So when IL-15 gets secreted, it maintains our uh, 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 regeneration of the uh, uh, skins or it prevents degeneration of uh, cells there. So this study supports the idea that exercise retards skin aging via mechanism that involves muscle-derived interleukin cysteine. So generally in this photo, you can see that how it acts, myokines acts as on skin, brain, and uh, white adipose tissue, lipolysis browning, macrophages, adrenal gland, and uh, uh, gastrointestinal tract, pancreas, liver, bone formation, even in uh, blood vessels. So there are a lot of... Uh, 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 myokines. There are 3,000 myokines they are saying, and uh, researchers saying. So it has a different effects. And uh, here you can see that physical exercise. We can we said that different types of exercise produce different kind of myosins. See, resist, resistance training increases decorin and uh, <clears throat> IGF-1. And endurance training increases myonectin, epilin, musculin, and interleukin-6. So what happens here? It uh, uh, helps in white adipose tissue, browning of adipose tissue, and it helps in uh, metabolism. Okay, so it uh, leads to increased lipolysis, glucose uptake, browning, thermogenesis, oxygen consumption. <laughs> so white adipose tissue is a reduction and regulation of gliconeo, glico, glycogenolysis and glycogenesis and increase of GLP-1. So it is glucagon-like peptide 1. So you can see here, these all are fighting against myostatin to prevent muscle atrophy or muscle wasting. Decorin, irisin, myonectin, apelin, musculin, interleukin-15, uh, IGF-1 and interleukin-6. These all are acting against myostatin and preserves the muscle properties. So another is aging. The first is uh, sarcopenia. Okay, in uh, sarcopenia, irisin, BMP, IL-15, interleukin-15, epilin, IGF and GDF all are under uh, reduced state. So that it, it will lead to risk of falls risk of uh, fractures, poor quality of life, disability, and uh, death uh, in older age. But even when uh, we start exercise early a little bit, uh, IGF, irisin, brain uh, derived neurofactor, all are getting increased, which leads to reduced risk of falls, risk of fractures, and it improves quality of life in older age. That means even an old person starts doing exercises, he will be having uh, benefits of exercise and longevity may be increased a uh, minimum of two to three years. So points to remember about myokines, they are also called cytokines, uh, peptides uh, released by muscle fibers and it works on autocrine manner, paracrine or endocrine. So myokines mediate communication between muscle and other organs, including brain, adipose tissue, bone, liver, gut, pancreas, vascular bed, skin, as well as within the muscle itself. So it has its effects on cognition, lipid metabolism, glucose metabolism, uh, browning of white fat, bone formation, endothelial cell function, hypertrophy, skin structure, and tumor growth. So it suppresses uh, tumor growth uh, uh, necrosis uh, factor. So, and uh, the myokine intermediate, uh, interleukin 6 mediates the exercise associated anti inflammatory effects both acutely with each bout of exercise and as a consequence of training adaptation, including reduction in adip uh, abdominal adiposity. So, it, uh, um, uh, it, it helps in a reduction of abdominal adiposity and also it helps in anti-inflammatory effects and it also helps in uh, plasticity of uh, muscle and uh, it uh, adapts to the train changes in the uh, training of the muscles. The identification of new myokines and their specific roles may lead to novel therapeutic targets. 
myokines can be useful biomarkers we can uh, 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 check those myokines level by doing uh, tests and uh, monitor the type and amount of exercise that required so according to that we can prescribe the exercise and dosage for the people and uh, we can prevent uh, chronic diseases especially cancer diabetes and neurodegenerative diseases and if we could give every individual right amount of nourishment and exercise not too little not too much we would have found the safest way to health so not only the exercise we need a right diet also anyone who lives a sedentary life and does not do exercises if he eats good foods okay whatever low fat all those things any recommendations and he takes a care of him uh, according to proper medical principle again his days will be painful ones and his strength will be said by physician to sultan of egypt rabbi moses ben maimon he is a jewish philosopher and uh, there are contraindications uh, uh, no need to worry about it because uh, we should wait for the right moment to start exercise but specific contraindications are dyspnea at rest and if they are having any uh, cardiovascular disease severe hypertension uh, ask the clients to uh, uh, consult a physician and take drugs before starting exercise do exercise testing and prescribe right kind of exercises for them and uh, for asthmatic patients we can give uh, Uh, breaks between the exercise bouts so that uh, they will feel comfortable and uh, risk of primary cardiac arrest was transiently increased during a single bout of vigorous exercise uh, all of a sudden if we do exercises there may be chances of getting cardiac arrest and uh, habitual vigorous exercise if we are habituated and it is a customized a customized exercise and gradually we are increasing our dosage of exercise it it will uh, decrease the risk factors associated with them so there are no absolute contraindications to very moderate exercise uh, in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease patients and in ca- cancer patients being treated with chemotherapy exercise is contraindicated when uh, leukocyte concentrations fall below uh 0.05 and uh one not nine cells and hemoglobin below 100 g per liter thrombocyte concentration uh, also when it is reduced and temperature above 38 degrees celsius patients with bone metastasis will be having weaker bone so we should not perform strength condition at high load so in diabetic patients we should ask uh, the clients to reduce their blood course level before we start exercises so before it, it should be get corrected then we can start uh, doing exercises and in patients with hypertension and active proliferative retinopathy high intensity exercise and the training involving valsalva manner uh, should be avoided exercise can be prescribed but valsalva manner should be avoided so it 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 affects the heart and uh, more force will be generated leading to uh, rupture of blood vessels so these are the references and uh, historically uh, exercise was uh, prescribed as medicine by shushruta uh, indian uh, what to say philosopher we can say and uh, but he didn't uh, do it as a prescription so by word of uh, mouth he said that to do exercises uh, mainly for obesity and uh, diabetes he did exercise uh, uh, exercise prescription but uh, galen was the one who prescribed exercise uh, first documented exercise as medicine and later on uh, there were many uh, diseases which uh, uh, came and uh, exercise was not helpful so all the researchers uh, during those days concentrated on finding new drugs so it was a it was some centuries uh, that many researchers came 
out finding uh, several drugs uh, which hindered the benefits of exercise and make our public run behind drugs. But recent times, after uh, they found about uh, benefits of myokines, there are more researchers coming out that exercise itself is a drug and properly done, we can stay healthy, get prevented from many chronic diseases. And even if there are some uh, diseases, not all, few diseases, uh, exercise helps to stay uh, healthy even in the conditions. And uh, thank you for listening. And I request Dr. Rupesh to continue the second part of this uh, webinar on how to do uh, exercises, why there is uh, important of doing warm up and conditioning and the cool down. Thank you, everyone. Thank Over. you, sir. And it was a wonderful session. Uh, I guess we have started our uh, uh, webinar sessions a year and a half ago. So I don't know who have improved or not, but we have improved with our knowledge and we have improved with our presentation. So we are doing our best to share knowledge and learn ourselves also. So yes. yes. It's very good yeah, it is a different molecular level. Uh, we don't know all these things. How we teach exercise to others, we don't know how it is helping. Even for uh, knee pain, even for back pain, we are treating, giving exercise. Exercise have helps. How it helps? Simply, we should not think that strengthening the muscle uh, will uh, relieve the pain. No, there are some uh, mechanism behind it. So there are uh, inflammatory process happening. Uh, pro inflammatories are there. When inflammation comes, then we have to wait to get it subsided. And when we teach exercise, anti-inflammatory enzymes will come and help to reduce the pain. Likewise, uh, we are always concentrating on pain and disability, but we are not concentrating on the wellness. Even someone is uh, very good, they don't have any health uh, issues, want to do exercise, stay fit. So we should co concentrate on them also. And fitness industry, industry should be in physiotherapist and at least. Exactly, sir. So it was very good session and it will definitely help to understand my session actually. So it made my session, what to say, uh, a little easier to understand. And we'll start with the session, sir. Yes, please carry on. Yeah. So now we'll just see the importance of exercises or importance of fitness so so far chandramohan sir has explained how exercises are helping our body to convert its chemical reactions and how it is acted on our body and everything he was briefly explaining and it was very understandable and easy note to improvise so now we'll look on importance of fitness why fitness is important so, YouTube viewers, you can give your comments on the YouTube chat box because it will be like eye opening to many and plenty of us, those who are watching this session live. So, if you comment importance of fitness, then it will be like you are active and attentive to the class. Just have a comment on your section. So, before going to the importance, we'll start with BMI. What is BMI? BMI is body mass index. Why BMI is needed in this session? Because to start with anything, we need certain goals. So if you have any goal, if you have that interest to reach that, then you will reach that easily. So a normal BMI is something the goal, then you need to reach that normal BMI if you are underweight or if you are overweight. So for that, your fitness path is going to play a major role. BMI is person's weight in kilograms is divided by the square of height in meters. So for example, a person is 50 kgs of weight and he is with 150 centimeters of height. So 50 kgs by 150 into 150 will give you your BMI. So there are normal BMI ranges and 
obesity level BMI ranges. So you need to calculate this BMI and find out to which level he or she is going to fall on. So when your BMI is high, it indicates the body fatness. When your BMI is low, it shows your body leanness. So there are weight categories which may cause health problems. That is obesity 1, obesity 2. It might lead to diabetic or thyroid issues or many other fitness issues also. But this will not conclude that you are fat or you are an healthier individual. But this gives an overview or idea of how you are or how we are. So we just saw about the formula. So this is the ranges of BMI. If you are below 18.5, we are called as underweight. What is underweight? You are malnutritious. So you need to go with diet as well as fitness to fall on 18.5 to 24.9, which is normal. So for example, an ideal BMI lays between 18.5 and 24.9. Approximately 22 will be your ideal BMI. So what if it is about 25 to 29.9, it says as overweight. That is obesity 1. You are in the starting stage of your obese. So if you reach 30 and above, you are overweight. Very overweight. It is obesity level 2. So what you need to do if you fall in 30 and above? You need to have plenty of diet here also. So to put on weight, to reduce weight, you need to follow certain diet with exercises. And to reduce your other metabolic reactions like thyroid or diabetic or hypertension, you also need exercise. So it doesn't lies on how fat you are or how lean you are. Even with 18.5 BMI, you need exercises to start on. So this exercise plays a major role for plenty of issues. It might be musculoskeletal issues or your metabolic issues or your physical issues or your athletic fitness or women's fitness or child's fitness. Whatever it is, this exercise is going to be in your life. That's why we call it as exercise existence. So, you are going to enrich yourself with exercises. So, if you are, uh, what is it, eating plenty of rice every day, what happens? You are going to have a lot of carbohydrates. So, if you add certain exercises, it also enriches your quality of life. So, exercise is must in everyone's life at present scenario. What are the risk associated factors with overweight. So I hope Chandramohan sir have given a very brief idea about how myotins are helping out in our body. So this is going to play indirectly with these metabolic changes that is you are reducing in high blood pressure. If you are overweight, if you do excess, it is going to reduce your high blood pressure. And we have both the levels of cholesterol that is bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. If your cholesterol is bad, you are going to have fat accumulations in your vessels. So to avoid that, you need to have burn your calories. If you are burning your calories out, you are going to lower the levels of HDL. So if you are lowering your cholesterols, cholesterol levels, it is going to be the remaining portion of cholesterol which is remaining in your body will be the good cholesterol which will be in moderation so it will not in higher or in lower it should be in moderation so even you need triglycerides that is three molecules so these three molecules are going to play a major role in your weight reduction and it, even you can prevent type 2 diabetes and coronary heart disease stroke gallbladder disease osteoarthritis that is your bone strength or your joint cartilages Strength or quality can be improvised, and sleep apnea and breathing problems can be, which these all in turn gives the low quality of life. So this low quality of life is going to put you stress, or it will take on depression, anxiety, and even it will give you mental stoppage to whatever activities you are going with. 
this in turn gives you the body pains and difficulty with certain physical functions so these physical functions are going to get improvised with your physical activities or exercises so that's why we called as exercise enriches the existence if you are underweight what are the risks which are going to associate with you so it can be called as malnutritious it may be due to the vitamin deficiencies there may be hair loss your appearance loss everything happens with vitamin deficiencies so you need to do exercises to prevent these things next is anemia that is lower ability to carry your blood vessels if you are overweight it is going to deposit in your blood vessels if you are underweight it is going to reduce your circulation that is your anemia condition so this anemic condition is going to play a major role in your healing and nutritious process if your healing is low automatically even if you get a small pain or small injury you are going to take lot of time to get yourself healed next is osteoporosis this is a disease that causes bone weakness how even if you are overweight it is going to give bone weakness even if you are underweight it is going to give bone weakness how if you are underweight it is going to due to the deficiencies if you are overweight it is going to be with the stress over your bones and joints so this in turn increases the risk of breaking a bone both have the uh, concepts of breaking a bone or weakening of the bone if you are underweight you are more prone to get affected easily that is called as decrease in immune function next growth and development and issues particularly in children and teenagers what are the growth developmental issues your height your hair growth your muscle mass every growth is going to have an issue so to prevent this issue you need to be doing exercises i mean next is possibly your reproductive issues so this might be due to the hormonal imbalances so these hormonal imbalances can disturb the menstrual cycle underweight women also have chances of miscarriage in their trimesters so it is not with other issues also it is also with your exercise issues so if you are exercising possibility of improvising your pelvic floor muscles also graves greater impacts on this prevention of these issues generally an increased risk of mortality compared to those with an healthier bmi so if you are with fit you can increase the next we'll go with the warm up so what is warm up so why you need warm up warm up before a workout is going to dilate your blood vessels so to start with any activities or uh, going into your exercises you need to start with warm up so if you are starting your exercise with warm up it dilates your blood vessels that ensures your muscles are supplied with better oxygen or more oxygen so you are going to raise your muscles temperature to get optimal flexibility if you are getting your flexibility in optimal level what happens your muscle injuries are reduced if your muscle injuries are reduced then automatically your overuse injuries or repetitive strain injuries can be prevented so always to start with slow raising heart rate for the warm up and which in turn helps in minimizing the stress to your cardiac function or your heart so to start with warm up we have three types of stretches in the warm up which are ballistic dynamic and static so to whom what to be given has to be assessed by a physiotherapist and you need to prescribe it over your pre exercise routine or regimens so first one is the ballistic stretches that involves the bouncy or jerky movements then these ballistic stretches are going to give improvisation in the joint range of motion also next is static stretches which involve flexing the muscles and holding it for minimum of 15 to 20 seconds 
So on an average, you are going to hold it for 20 seconds. Next is dynamic stretches. So what is dynamic? Dynamic is going to you need to take it up and then come down. For example, these are active stretches where you are going to stretch yourself actively, which involves all the body movements. For example, you are swinging your legs, swinging your arms. So you are going to take your body to what way it needs to go. So if you are reaching the particular direction or range, then you are reaching the full range of motion to improve its performance. So if you do these stretches on your assessment to your client or to your player or to anyone before starting any fitness proto protocols helps you to prevent injuries. Next going to terms in this set. So it is going to raise your pulse. So we call it as pulse raiser. Example, we call it as jogging, skipping. So depending upon the time and place you are going to find the activity. It can be like football or it can be like foot volley or it can be just pass on over the balls where you are going to imply to your clients. So this slowly increases your heart rate and body temperature. Next is mobility. Example, arm swings and hip circles. So when your mobility is good, you are going to progress it with your stability. So this mobility, you are going to give it for 20 movements. Next comes your dynamic movement. Example, we call it as sudden movements of your body. So you can call it as shuttle runs, or you can call it as agility runs, or you can call it as sprints, whatever it is, dynamic. How fast, how quick. So you need to have sudden changes of movements, everything in your warm-up sessions also. Next, we'll go with stretches, that is dynamic, ballistic, or static. Depends upon the need to your client, you need to find it. Examples are like groin walk and open and close the grid. So just move your activities. That's all, move your arms. Next goes with the skill rehearsal. So for example, for football players, you can give just passing the drills. For cricketers, you can give just like bowling his arm or throwing with his arm. You are just having the warm ups. For example, in the match, you are going to give 100%. In warm up, you are going to give 60 to 75%. Depending upon the workload, you are going to measure it and you are going to prescribe it to your client again. Next, we'll go with flexibility. What is flexibility? Flexibility is ability of a joint or series of joints to move through an unrestricted or pain-free range of motion. So this plays a major role to prevent your fitness. So our topic is exercise enriches existence. So even overdoing of exercise causes you pain or it causes you interruption in your regular activities or whatever it is. You need to follow certain things. Those are these warm up, flexibility are major components. So, if you're warmed up, you are less prone to injury. If you have flexibility, you are less prone to your overuse or repetitive strain injuries. So, these repetitive strain injuries will help in your existence. So, this existence is going to play a greater role for the ex uh, enrichment for your nourishment for your body or your muscles. Next, although your flexibility varies widely from person to person, there are minimal ranges or minimal assessments has to be taken. So these assessments has to be taken and improved for yourself or to your client in maintaining the joint and total body health. Next, flexibility is defined as the ability to change or to bend or to pursue it. For example, to reach anything, if you're flexible enough, your catches and sprains or strains will be reduced. So an example of being flexibility is being able to work whenever one wants. So you should not feel lazy to do something. So if you're flexible enough, you can reach it or you can finish it at a stretch or reaching it on a stretch. So you'll prevent it from being 
at greater levels. That is only we are going to see now how flexibility is going to work. It works because that kind of stretching loads the muscle with more force at a greater level of extension. Obviously, when you are flexible enough, that stretching is going to divert the loads to that muscle. So this in turn reduces the greater levels of body movements. Then your nervous system, then that muscle can be strong and safe at any levels of your movements. That is even at your hyper extension movements also, it is going to play a safer role. So these are considered to be the three main types of stretching what we saw earlier. So here what is added is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. So this facilitates your muscle and nerve junction. So there are uh, criteria to improve your flexibility is around three to four weeks of regular stretching of each muscles with minimum of 30 to 40 seconds of hold with two to three reps. So studies repeatedly shows that stretching three times per week provides optimal results. Breast stretches for flexibility are static poles or PNF stretches. Next, one more important thing is cool down. After to warm up, you are going to do severe exercise session or normal exercise session or regular exercise session. You need to cool your body self down. So what is the purpose of this? It returns your heart to your closer resting rate. That is your heart rate goes to the resting heart rate. Stopping quickly without a cool down, what happens? You are going to have changes in your metabolic system. So there will be rush of blood circulation and sudden stop. What happens? It cools the body blood circulation. So then you will be having deadness, dizziness or even fainting. So to prevent these things, you need to have proper cool down session, cooling down session. A good cool down or a good example for a cool down session is walking after running or jogging after running or whatever it is, you need to go for again static stretches after performing any physical activities. This should be ranging anywhere from two to five minutes. Breathe deeply while cooling down to deliver oxygen to your muscles, release tension and promote relaxation. So the three key parts of an effective cool down are Exercise at very reduced intensity and diaphragmatic breathing. Low intensity, long hold static stretching that is very gentle and self massage or foam rolling will also help your protein. Next is your rehydration or refueling it, which is going to give you Rupesh, you are breaking. Now, sir? Ah, yes. Yeah, sir. Next is rehydration or refueling. That only no, sir. Yes, Rupesh. Yeah. Right. Next is your rehydration or refueling, which is conditioning yourself. Conditioning in the sense you are doing 100 meter run for 20 to 30 times. That is around 200 times. What happens? You are going to raise your cardiac levels. You are going to sweat yourself so your energy is lost then you need to conditioning it it with proper hydration and proper nutrition next there are three primary phases for your cool down period these are immediate phase intermediate phase and late phase immediate phase which is immediately after your activity maybe like your fitness sessions or your sporting activities or your exercise session Intermediate is something you can take break for 15 to 20 minutes and you are going to go for stretches. Late phase is something like you are finishing your sport, exercise or whatever it is in the afternoon and you are going to stretch after one day or stretch after you getting pain is called as late phase. So we prefer immediate phase of cooling down is more effective than the other two. So for optimal results, you should spend a total of 60 seconds on each stretching exercises. So if you hold for a particular stretch for 15 seconds, you need to repeat it for four times totally. That is once you do 15, you need to repeat it like three more times. If you're holding it for 20 seconds, then you need to do it like three into 20, that is 60 seconds hold. So you need to calculate and you need to give the dosage. Next important thing is getting the result of what you are doing. 
so you are finding out that is assessing yourself to which category you are, you are at then you are going to do exercise so doing exercise you need to start with warm up then after exercise you are going to do cool down so after doing these things what you are going to get improve your endurance so how endurance is going to get improved with your fitness protocols endurance is the ability of an organism to exert itself and remain active for longer period of time in the sense endurance is the ability of an organism to exert in the sense it is going to come with you or it is within you you are going to take it out so when you are taking it out you are going to have it with you for longer time if you are creating something it is going to be with you for longer time if you are getting it for free or if someone is gifting you it might be like going away easily or for shorter period of time it is going to have its own quality so as well as its ability to resist withstand recover and have immunity to trauma wounds or fatigue whatever it is you are having to face it by yourself when you are facing it by yourself it is going to be there within you for a longer duration when it is there for longer duration it is going to be with aerobic or anaerobic exercise patterns only with short term energy activation or with long term activation energy you are going to find it out so there are types of endurance which are aerobic anaerobic speed endurance strength endurance so you need to assess it again over here before starting what type of training you are going to give it to your client so if they are coming after an injury you need to assess it and then you need to progress it slowly if they are coming for general fitness you can start with aerobic and then with anaerobic or to particular sport you need to give what type of endurance they need and then you can find the speed or strength for a beginner workout minimum of one on maximum of three low intensity exercise cardio works you can plan for a week these are all examples so i am not saying you all to follow these things you can have some protocols and you need to have the quantification for that protocols like for fever if you go to any doctor he will prescribe dosage for paracetamol in the same way if you are activating our quadricep muscles we need to have dosage for it so for low intensity how many workouts for high intensity how many workouts you need to find it according to your clients frequency is aim to complete this type of workout one to three times per week at low intensity so for a beginner so try walking steady stationary biking elliptical training or steady rowing for 40 to 90 minutes according to your progression you can improvise your time so minimum of 40 to 90 minutes you can plan for your clients so now we'll see what are the few exercise routines which are going to be followed uh, as warm up so to start with warm up we are going with band exercises so you are giving for shoulder mobility so if you are rotating your shoulders your mobility and range of motion to your shoulder is going to get improvised you need to do it clockwise and anti clockwise next is your shoulder circles or rotations you need to rotate it clockwise and anti clockwise these are all like basics so we have many more protocols also you need to follow our page or you need to follow our videos for these things next is your arm swings you need to swing your arm front and back these are all the dynamic stretches or dynamic movements so this helps in turn to your regular warm up activities this is warm up to start with so you need to do it bilateral both the sides then only you are going to get activated next we'll go on with the butterflies to your upper body next we'll go with butterflies to your lower body hip mobility or groin mobility next braces to your upper body next we'll go with the shrugs you need to raise your shoulders up and down next we'll go with the 
leg swings. You need to have support of your upper body and swing your lower body, front and back. You should not lean forward and you should be upright. Next, you can do it to your opposite side. So these are all again the general and base ideas to be followed with it. Next, you can do it, the heel rises. So you are going to target each and every muscles in your warm up to just prepare. So once you are preparing, you can progress it with this strength training. So we are going with this strength training. So to start with, for examples, example of the protocol for strength training, we start with bridging, raising your hips up and down. So this strengths your paraspinal gluteal muscles. You need to find or terminate the sets and reps. Next, we'll go with the clamshell activities. Your heel and heel should be in contact. Next, you need to lift or raise your knees up and down. Your trunk should be stable enough. Next, we'll go with the raising of alternate hand and leg. We call it as Superman. This challenges your trunk. Next, we'll go with the upper body workout, YTW, we call it as hands in Y position. Next in T position. So these are all like scapular strengthening activities. Next we'll go with the core activities. So this is to challenge or strengthen your core. We call it as dead bugs. So raise your hands and legs alternatively and move it forward and backward. So this is going to challenge your upper and lower core. Next, we'll move on with the inchworm exercises. We are going to move inch by inch forward and raise up. So these are all like compound activities and which strengthens your body or self. So these exercises helps everyone or every phase of life. Next, we'll go with the cat and camel. Sorry, we call it as bird dog. It strengthens your outer thigh or abductions or abductors. Your trunk should be stable, only your lower half should be moved. Next, we'll go with the squats which strengthens your quadricep muscles and it's close chain activity we're going to target each and every part of your muscles next we'll go with split lunges you're going to do these things for both the legs you need to change your legs also Next is static lunges. In the place where you are, you're going to sit and stand with one leg forward or in running pose. And next we'll move on with the Pilates activities. So Pilates, I'm just giving, briefing it out. So the movement pattern has to be neat and clean and rhythmical activities. For knowing brief about it, you need to attend our Pilates courses, which have been organized by Team EXRX India. So getting uh, or knowing overview of these exercises is going to help you to where you are going to go ahead.
So these X's are going to be with you. After doing this, your the results are going to be with you. So each and every moment is going to be in simpler format and in a rhythmical and ease manners. So these helps as well as next is your leg activities or leg taps, toe taps. What are the Pilates activity? What we're showing in this video, the th last three, four exercises will be with the following of Pilates principles. So there are five Pilates principles that you need to know it on attending our previous webinars or on attending our future Pilates webinars. So with this, I conclude for today's session. If anyone having any doubts, you can raise your questions in your chat box. Kindly check the chat box in YouTube, Rupesh. Yes, there is a sir. question, Rupesh, in YouTube. Yeah. Proper warm up time and duration, I think. One second, I'm opening my YouTube. I can post it for you in Zoom. Dear participants, we request you to post your work. I posted here in Zoom chat box. Please. Questions in uh, chat box. Yeah. From Telvil Silly. Proper warm up takes how much time? Uh, proper warm up needs minimum of 12 to 13 minutes to maximum 16 to 17 minutes. So, how you are going to calculate whether your body is warmed up or not on seeing your client or on seeing your player? So, if he is well warmed up, his movements become ease and in a rhythmical manner, he performs his activities. So, by that, you can judge whether he is warmed up completely or not. Warming up uh, gives the flexibility, that means. Yes. No more questions there. Yeah. Does Open it vary sessions? according to the need of the player or client? From whom can you put in Zoom chat? I ask. I ask. What, sir? Now, does warm up duration varies according to player or the sports? Uh, warm up varies according to the situations, surroundings, that is, environments. How? Because if you are going to hilly areas which is cold, there you are going to spend more time on your warm up rather than your cool up. So, depending upon the area, you are going to find the warm up duration. Depending upon sport, you need to find whether it is lower body sport or upper body sport and you need to concentrate on particular extremity, whether it is upper or lower extremity. So that's how you are going to differentiate with different sport and different climates. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rupesh. Yeah. I see still 25 to 30 participants are going live with us. So... In spite of busy webinar sessions, we are having good amount of participants with us. Yes, uh, this, that's why we have planned it a day earlier because a lot of webinars are happening on September 8th and most of the webinars have started uh, from September 5 itself. Uh, we, we planned to skip organizing any activities, but uh, uh, because of our uh, co-founder, Dr. Rupesh, and uh, uh, Ms. Duna, uh, we made it something we have to do. So that's why we chose uh, exercise part. Uh, at least uh, it should uh, give some insight regarding how really it helps. And uh, I thank uh, Rupesh also uh, for joining with me and teaching about uh, warm up, conditioning, and uh, cool down exercises. I think uh, no questions from. Uh, Viewers, yeah. and if there are any questions, you can uh, most of them have our uh, WhatsApp number. You can write to us, or you can write here in the 
chat box itself and we will uh, take the questions and we will respond to you at any time which is applicable for us and yeah. uh, you can post your suggestions also in our uh, youtube chat box and comments or any critics all are welcome and once again i take opportunity to wish everyone a very happy world physiotherapy day 2021 a uh, little bit early but okay even we have planned why don't we start by 10 o'clock and end up by uh, september 8th but uh, it won't be suitable uh, because everyone will be sleeping and it is not a festival time uh, like uh, uh, pongal lohri or diwali so that we can uh, stay awake till late night uh, but anyhow just few hours uh, are there but still we would like to uh convey our wishes uh from uh, more than 30 countries uh, participants on behalf of exrx india thank you everyone and uh, uh thank you rupesh for joining with me thank you duna madam for joining with me i wish you a very happy uh, sport uh, world physiotherapy day rupesh and uh, thanks and thank you all of us So I also wish all yes. the participants and all our members happy World Physiotherapy Day 2021. Stay home, stay safe, and do things virtually and drop up, drop yourself. Yes, thank you. Take.